Ladies and gentlemen, let's tackle this interesting exercise. We need to find the shaded area of the figure where we have two circles inscribed within an isosceles triangle. Very well, this means that this side will be equal to this side here. In an isosceles triangle, we can draw a completely vertical line from this vertex to this point here. Notice that it is a tangential point between the large circle and the base of the triangle. We draw this line and this line is very interesting because it is a bisector, a median, a perpendicular bisector. And, and the height of the triangle, well, this only happens when they are isosceles triangles. Since it is the height, you will see a 90 degree angle here. And notice it reaches right at the tangential point between this circle and the base of the triangle. And there is always a 90 degree angle between the radius and the tangent line to the perimeter of a circle. Very good. Alright, now you might be wondering why we know that it passes through the middle. Notice that for a line from here, these two lines are tangent to this small circle. To become a bisector, this line must reach the center of this circle here. And it indeed reaches the center. It extends from here to here. Now notice this line that is tangent here and this other line that is tangent here. For this line to be a bisector, it needs to reach the center of the large circle. Then it indeed reaches the center too. Very well, I hope you understood why it passes through the center of both circles. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is erase this part here. Look, we're erasing it. Remember that it was 1, right? So here we had, sorry, here 1 and 1. And the radius of this large circle was 2. 2 over here and 2 over here, 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 2 over here. Great, now let's draw some lines from the center of the circle to this tangential point between the circle and the side of the triangle. We draw the line and it looks like this. Alright, alright, and remember that this is the radius of the large circle, so it's 2. Now we do the same with this small circle we have here. Drawing a line to this tangential point and remember that this line is the radius, so it measures 1. When we draw a radius to a tangential point like here, 90 degree angles are formed between these two lines. Here there will be 90 degrees and the same thing happens here. Excellent, we will call this angle here angle alpha. And this angle over there angle beta, let's write it down here, very good. Alright, so if we have 90 degrees and alpha in this little triangle, which angle are we missing to reach 180 degrees? It's beta because in the larger triangle we said that 90, alpha and beta add up to 180 degrees in a triangle from the sum of its angles. So we would have beta here. The same happens with this triangle here. If we have 90 here and alpha here, then this angle has to be beta. And look at what we achieved with this. We deduced that we have several similar triangles because they have the same angles. And so the first thing we are going to do is call this little segment from here to here Y. This small triangle here and this medium triangle over here. Alright, so what we can say is check this out. Uh, this part, which is the hypotenuse of the small triangle, which is y from here to here is y. And from here to here is 1, so it's y plus 1. Let's write it as y plus 1 equals the hypotenuse of the medium triangle. The hypotenuse would be 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1, 4 plus y. Alright, now let's relate the bases. The ratio 1 to 2 gives us that 1 is to 2. We can cross multiply and we get 2 times y plus 1 which equals 1 times the rest. But that simplifies to just 4 plus y. Here we apply the distributive property which results in 2y. And then we have 2 and this is going to be equal to 4 plus y. 
We move the y to the left side and the 2 to the right side, which gives us 2y minus y. Equals 4, and these two becomes negative. 2 as i minus y equals y. And for minus 2 is 2. Fascinating. We have found the value of y, which is this little bit here that matches the radius of the circle we have here. Impressive. This right here is 2, remember. Now, now what are we going to do? Since we have a right triangle here and we have two of its sides, well, we have the hypotenuse and one side. We can find the other side, which we will call Z. So we're going to use the mighty Pythagorean theorem. So, when we want to find the side, it is equal to the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. So we have here, ladies and gentlemen, that the hypotenuse is this part. 2 plus 1, which gives us 3. 3 squared minus the other side, which is this part here that measures 1. 1 squared is 1. And 3 squared is 9. So we have 9 minus 1, which gives us 8. The square root of 8. But remember, that side is this side here, which was C. Well, here we will change it to C, as shown below. Fascinating. We already have this value here. Let's substitute it. This is the square root of 8. All right, now let's make the final relation of triangles. We are going to relate the large triangle with this smaller triangle that we have here. Excellent. So let's say, look, the side of the large triangle that connects the 90 degrees with beta is x. So we put x here. Now we go to the small triangle, the side that connects 90 degrees with beta is 1. So we place the 1 here. Now let's relate this side here. Notice this side measures 2 and 2, 4 and 2, 6 and 2, 8. Alright, so 8. And let's look at this side that connects 90 with alpha. Now going to the small triangle from 90 to alpha connects square root of 8. If we notice, since x is over 1, we can remove this one here. Excellent. And as all good mathematicians do, we are going to rationalize. We multiply by the square root of 8 and divide by the square root of 8. In the numerator, we get 8 times the square root of 8. And in the denominator, the square root of 8 times the square root of 8, which is 8. Simplifying 8 and 8, we have that x is the square root of 8. Great, we have that the x is equal to the square root of 8. A spectacular, and with this we can now find the shaded area. The shaded area will be equal to the area of the isosceles triangle. So here we have the area of the triangle minus the area of circle 1, and minus the area, a, a, the area of the circle 2. We will call this circle 1, and this circle 2, yes. So we have that the shaded area equals the area of a triangle which is base times height divided by 2. What is the base of the triangle? Well, it is all of this, which is 2 times x. So let's write down 2 times x. Who is the height? The height is this part here, which is 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, then multiplied by 8 and all this over 2. Simplifying this 2 with this 2, we get 8x, which is the area of the triangle, 8x. But we know that x is the square root of 8, so we can write it here. Great, we have found the area of the triangle minus the area of the circle pi times the radius squared. This circle 1 has a radius of 1, so we get 1 squared, which gives us 1. And 1 times pi gives us pi, minus pi times the radius squared. And the radius of circle 2 is 2. So we have 2 here, 2 squared, therefore it's 4. And by the beard of Euclid, the shaded area, ladies and gentlemen, will be 8 times the square root of 8 minus 5 pi over here. All of this is in square units. Fascinating. We have already found the shaded area, meaning these little blue parts. Let's also leave an approximation. The shaded area is approximately 6.9 square units. Spectacular. See you next time. Bye-bye.